In literature and in movies, authors and screenwriters often present a character that serves to contrast and oppose the main character. This contrasting character is called a foil. The foil character may be completely opposite to the protagonist, or may be very similar with only one or two key differences. These foil characters often serve to highlight some particular quality or qualities in the hero of the story. Examples might be the good cop versus bad cop in a police drama, Dr. Watson opposed to Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Draco Malfoy against Harry Potter, Spock set opposite Captain Kirk. Each of these characters are placed beside one another in order to provide a deep contrast with each other. At many points, our prophet Jonah serves as this foil character, providing a distinct and apparent contrast with many other characters in Scripture. Jonah often provides the negative example, whereas others in the Bible display some positive character in following and obeying the Lord. In today's session, we will survey several different characters in Scripture in order to compare and contrast them with Jonah, and we will see how they serve to instruct us in our obedience in following the Lord. First, Jonah's preaching to the wicked and pagan city of Nineveh could easily have resulted in his persecution and death. Yet instead of staying faithful to the Lord, Jonah reacts to this risky call by running away. Whereas the three Hebrew men in Babylon stand to face certain death in a fiery furnace. Notice where one flees, the others remain steadfast. Second, in Genesis 18, the Lord promised destruction upon another wicked city. Yet God's servant Abraham reacted to this news in much different fashion than Jonah. Abraham's prayer to God over Sodom is antithetical to Jonah's prayer over Nineveh. One prays for enduring mercy, the other for swift judgment. Finally, both Jonah and Job meet with God and face a barrage of questions from the Almighty. But the two men react in a completely different manner, one with pride, one with humility. In light of these three ex examples, one wonders how and why the, the Lord gave Jonah a second chance to obey. Jonah initially failed to follow the command of God to evangelize the great city of Nineveh. He attempted to run from the presence and influence of the Lord, only to discover that the Lord who made heaven and earth was waiting for him at the bottom of the sea. God allowed Jonah a second chance to follow and obey. So Jonah went and preached to the great city the message of judgment and salvation to a wicked people, and a great awakening broke out. God had used this wayward and prodigal prophet to bring revival and salvation to one of the most violent and pagan cities in the ancient world. Remember, despite Jonah physically running from the Lord's instructions and mentally and spiritually resisting the Lord's compassionate care for others, God allowed this weak and reluctant servant to be part of His plan to save people. And God continues to use broken, apathetic, and disobedient people today. God still calls each one of us to follow Him in obedience. He is calling you to follow Him in obedience. Maybe He has already called you to obey, and you've refused or ignored Him. Have you failed to follow God's command? Are you attempting to run away from Him? You are not too far gone, and God can and will restore and use you. Are you reluctant to follow Him because it seems difficult? Stand on the promise that God will hold you fast. Are you callous or cold to God's mercy for others? Remember God's gracious work on your behalf. Are you standing before God demanding your own way? Humble yourself before Him in order that He may lift you up. God has always used broken, desperate, reluctant, and sinful people in His plans in order to show us that they, or us, or anyone, they are not the heroes of the story. God uses a prodigal prophet in Jonah, a weak-willed Abraham, a prideful Job, a trembling donkey, and an unassuming fish to accomplish his, his goals. Because God is the only hero of the Bible. He is the one who gets credit, honor, and glory for the salvation of the world. No character, no giant of church history, no you, not me, nor any of us are the central figure in the drama of salvation. That space is reserved for God alone, specifically for Christ alone. So embrace your role in God's story, step back from the limelight, and be obedient to the task He has called you. Allow the examples of Jonah, Abraham, Job, and the three Hebrew men in Babylon to point you to the true and lasting hero of Jesus. Don't neglect the tremendous role He has given to you as you participate in this great story that God is writing for us, as He calls a people from every tribe, tongue, and nation to worship around the throne forever and ever, giving praise to the Lamb, for salvation comes from Him alone.